OK, we're going to come back to uh, Liverpool Porto in a little while, but you may have heard that the Board of Sport Ireland today decided to suspend and withhold future funding to the FAI. The FAI responded almost immediately to that statement to say they are keen to rebuild this relationship with Sport Ireland and with the processes now in place are confident that they will be able to satisfy governance and financial issues. The FAI will appear before a joint Oireachtas committee uh, tomorrow morning. Liam Brady, are you surprised at this move by Sport Ireland? No, <coughs> not really. If they're in the contravention of, of, of the regulations and they haven't let them know uh, that they were in serious financial problems. Uh, they've broken their regulation, so uh, I think it's par for the course that the Sport Ireland and the way they've been treated by the FAI, getting letters late, not getting responses to their questions, uh, I, I think they've got every right to say, right, we're going to withhold uh, uh, this money until we, get, until we get serious answers to serious questions, and that's probably going to come out tomorrow, so I'm not surprised at all. What, Richie, do you want to hear the FAI say to that joint Oireachtas committee meeting tomorrow? As Liam said, to give very clear, like speak with absolute clarity, um, answering all the questions that have come up over the last few weeks. I think they should be very, very embarrassed tonight that they've been sanctioned by Sport Ireland in this way, that because of how they've gone about doing their business, that now funding is being denied. To, to, to Irish football. I wasn't overly impressed with Donald Conway's statement tonight. He kind of said that he was disappointed with that. I would have preferred to come out and admit total responsibility and say that absolutely how we've behaved is, is way below the standards that an organisation like ours should be expected. And but they did apologise in one of the remarks yesterday, one of the statements yesterday for the, the lack of correspondence or the confusion. They did, and, and there's, there's a lot of questions. Like you're asking now, what should the committee be looking for tomorrow? We've had, I don't know how many statements we've had from the FAI, and we've had some statements of support from various people in Irish football, but none of them have provided any clarity or information, particularly around the 100 grand issue. And there was a statement yesterday by Donald Conway which suggested that something that the FAI have said recently was at odds with what the board knew at the time. So, like, the, the, like where do you start with that? Like, they, so tomorrow, we can't have any fudged answers. We can't hear anyone from the FAI saying, you know, we can only answer that when the report has concluded its work. Or there's an inquiry going on, we'll wait. To... They have all the answers. John Delaney will know absolutely the circumstances around why he was asked, we're led to believe, for a personal loan to give to the, the organisation. John Delaney doesn't need an inquiry to feed him the information to be able to answer that question. But there are various investigations and processes, Donald mm. Conway says, taking place at the moment, and they will report back to the FAI mm. with But I, I, hope, I hope the committee won't take that as a satisfactory answer to those questions. So if they say tomorrow, explain the circumstances of why the organisation felt compelled to get a hundred grand loan. Why did they not go to a bank? Mm. Why did they go to the CEO? Like this is the first time the CEO has been asked to give a personal loan, was it a one-off? Those questions can be answered. Like John Delaney or the president or any of the other directors there can't get away with saying, listen, we're going to wait to see what the report says. Well, I'm sure that's the, the committee members will ask those well, questions tomorrow. Well, that's their job. That's yeah. their job. So they need to keep asking the questions until the answers are, are, are given with absolute clarity. So that by the end of the, 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 the meeting or the hearing, that whatever amount of hours it takes, there's no, there's no grey areas that we can join all the dots. Kevin, what is your take on where we are this evening? Yeah, I'm, I'm like the lads, like, and I get on over the years very well with John. I've had a good relationship as an international player. I would have met up with him a lot and spoke to him a lot. So from that side of it, I got on very well with him. But, you know, it's come to the stage, you just want, I think, a full and frank, like, like the two lads said, a full and frank answer tomorrow. You don't want to bat it away again and wait for, it's, it's the FAI's own independent report. If it's all fine and everything, just tell us, tell us tomorrow and let's move on. Um, if that's the case, if it is all, straightforward you know I don't know why we, we we can't find out that information why do we have to wait on another independent report we seem to have had a lot of independent reports over the years mm -hmm. um, like you want to be talking here you want to be asking me about the Ireland under 17s and the Euros in the summer the Ireland under 19s instead we're talking about this for the last number of weeks when we should be getting on to success stories about Irish soccer and this is this sort of thing is just getting in the way and we need a resolution people that I speak to at home 
in Wex or whatever. It's not, we wouldn't be you know, paying a whole lot of attention to, to football day in, day out, are talking about this, and they just want a straightforward, straightforward answer. Tomorrow mm. is, the, is the time to do that. And we should say as well, you mentioned the 17s, you're part of the coaching team with the 17s on a voluntary basis. They're in the European Championships, which are being uh, played here. Um, Liam, I just want to come back to you, because recently in the Examiner you wrote, I think after the Georgia and Gibraltar games, that you said that you would rather reform or change in the FAI than the Republic of Ireland qualify for Euro 2020. Tell yeah, me in, why. In, in the context, Dara, that if there's no major revelations going to come out now over this, uh, the, in, these, in this inquiry by the Oireachtas, um, then it'll just carry on. It'll just carry on as norm. Uh, John Delaney's got a new role in the FAI, but it's still a very significant role. You wonder what the CEO, what power is he going to have the next CEO when he gets in there. It just doesn't fit. Um, and if Mick McCarthy does well, which hand on heart I want him to do, I'm a great supporter of Mick McCarthy and I want our team to do well. But if that goes on and does well, well all this will just die away and uh, they'll get away with it again. And I don't think they should. You know, My beef uh, over the last few years has been the lack of development of our young players in Ireland and especially in the hotbeds of Dublin and Cork. We are just not producing any players. And the FAI are responsible for that. And John Delaney, as CEO, he's mm. responsible for that. And I also said that people like Brian Kerr, who have got um, enormous expertise in this area, have just been ignored. And this is wrong. Now, I don't know too much about the financial situation of the FAI, but the, the development of our young players is why I think there should be change. On top of that, are the finances in, in, in good shape? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. We're going to find that's, out. Mm. That's what I'm saying in mm. that context, Tara, that if, if we get results and if we qualify, nothing will change. You see, I suppose, look, on the other side, the FEI will point to the Emerging Talent Programme, the reorganisation of the underage but leagues. But happened, Tara. But, well, the under-19s are in the elite We've European had Trapatoni. Championship final. We've had Trapatoni in the job. We've had uh, 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 Martin O'Neill in the job. The, the average age of our team the other night that played against Georgia was 29 years of age. We, where, are, where are our 20 year olds? Look at what's happening in England. We're going to watch Trent Alexander tonight playing right back. He's 20 years of age. Mm. Where, are the, those, where are those players? Well, Kevin, just, I read a, a piece that you had in the Times of London today. Uh, you were quoted yesterday as saying that there are young players coming through, but it's up to them, basically, I'm paraphrasing. They, they've got to put the hard yeah, work in to well, make it. Like I didn't, I didn't know until the last six months when I was involved with the, with the under 17 see the work that goes in, in in my group is called O'Brien and Ian Hill who mm. are in charge and um, you know it gives me hope for the future to see those under 17s they're in the yours I said in the summer the under 19s I don't know that group as well but they've qualified for the European Championships I do see I suppose green shoots I know it's a term that's used a lot but I do see I see under 13 under 15 under 17 the I do see progress being made. I see the facilities are improving. Now, it's nothing got to do with what's going on tomorrow or whatever, but yeah. I'm All just I talking from to you, Kevin, I don't see any 19-year-olds playing in the Premiership who are Irish and, and Mick McCarthy can pick. That's all. We can move on to something else now. That's, I think, Liam's right, though. If you listen to some commentators about Irish football, for to come back as far as you like, they, they seem to assess the health of Irish football based solely on the performance of the men's senior team. And that's it. So if we, like Liam said, if we qualify for a tournament, it's like all is well. There's a, there's a load of bonus money coming in and everyone's smiling and everyone's patting themselves on the back. There, there are underlying issues which we've been talking about and writing about for years and years and years and we've seen no noticeable shift. But Kevin's right. Let's not get sidetracked with a mm. discussion here about youth football and underage football. They're all relevant issues and they're all concerns. But t tomorrow is about a different issue. It's about getting very, very clear answers on the governance within the FAI and what did the board know and when did they know it and how like how the, the statement yes from Donald Conway he said some recent comments made by the FAI did not accurately reflect the board's level of awareness of the existence of the hundred grand issue how is that possible how, how did it like statements is it a statement by the FAI so how did that come out into the public domain and give us basically what was misinformation Mm -hmm. And so did the board not know? And if they didn't know, why didn't John Delaney let them know? Because from what we're led to believe, he wrote the cheque himself personally. So they're very straightforward questions. They're, like, they're really obvious like, gaps here in <clears> what we're being told. 
despite the umpteen statements that have come out, we're still in the dark about the stuff that's important. So however many hours it takes tomorrow, or how many vague answers they get, or many different routes they have to go at the delegation tomorrow to get the information they need, they should keep at it and keep there all night if needs be. I think you said it in a straightforward question, mm. straightforward answers. That's yeah. all anyone wants tomorrow. And if you get that, you know, so be it. They said that, like the statement today, we seek to fully address all concerns in a determined and transparent manner. Like if the response is judged basically on statements, they're, they're playing a blinder so far. It was based on things that they say, but tomorrow's an opportunity to deliver on it. So in a, in a determined and transparent manner. Well, that's what they're saying. That's what that's the FAR is saying. Tonight. So, so they've set it up. That's what they've said. So tomorrow, tomorrow, we're going to expect to see in a very determined and transparent manner, the FAI seek to restore the trust and the confidence of Sport Ireland and the rest of the sporting public in the country. So they have a hell of a job to do that. I don't know if they can do that in one sitting, but they need to start. Okay, well, that committee hearing uh, tomorrow is due to start around uh, 10 o'clock.